Hi, I'm Christy, and this is Today We Tried, a parenting podcast brought to you by Kaluga, where we talk about big moments in parenthood and break them down to make them feel less daunting and more doable. I'm a mom of three and chief parent officer and general counsel at Kaluga, and I'm very excited to be here today with special guest, Nikki Osei Barrett. Nikki is the owner of Osei PR and co-founder of District Mother Hued and amazing events such as the Mom Friends and Mommy on Blanc. She is a mom of three also, and her youngest, Faye, is just about the same age as my youngest, Wynn. So it's just fun to have been like following along uh, as Faye is growing and Wynn is growing. Nikki, how are you doing? I am well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's another quick week. I don't know about you, but my day is just like fly by right now. They really, really do. And I was going to post something on Instagram yesterday and I was like, top not Tuesday. And I was like, wait, it's Wednesday. (laughs) (laughs) I know it's hard to keep track. And I'm really excited you're here. I mean, you've been doing the most during this time, (laughs) during the COVID. You, You have three kids at home and you're also working on pivoting some of your businesses right now. So I'm really excited to hear kind of what is working for you, what isn't, because I think it'll be super valuable to our listeners. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm super excited to join and chat with you. We're huge fans of Kalugo at the Montfort and District Mother Huge. So thanks yeah. for having me. Of course, of course. So can you tell our listeners who don't know a little bit more about the Montfort? Because it's such an awesome event. Of course. So the Momference is the nation's premier full day conference for millennial moms of color. It's unlike anything you've ever attended. And a lot of the moms have kind of equated it to like Essence Fest for moms. And it's basically just a full day of Black mom magic, incredible keynotes, speakers, sessions on any topic you could ever imagine as it pertains to the Black Mothering Experience. There's an amazing mommy market, which features uh, 40 to 45 small-owned, Black-owned, mompreneur-owned businesses. There's food, there's happy hour, there's a DJ at nine o'clock in the morning, there's yoga. It's just an incredible experience. And it's brought to you by District Motherhood, which is the parent organization. And it's the premier 501c3 for Millennial Moms of Color based in the DMV area, which is DC, Maryland, and Virginia. And so that was scheduled when it was, it was early June, right? And oh. like, obviously an in-person event. I remember we had been talking about it and how yes. could we could get involved and yes. then, and then COVID hit. Then Rona came and ruined yeah. everything. I was, <laughs> it was actually scheduled for May 16th, meaning this okay, okay. Saturday. All right. So it was like, May 16th. Okay. It was supposed to be this coming Saturday. And the realization is like setting in, like, oh my goodness, we would be in the trenches right now. We would be stuffing gift bags. We'd be so excited. Our social media would be like buzzing. We tend to have like an incredible press week. So it's kind of like sad to realize. Yeah. Like, this is not happening this weekend. So initially it was scheduled for May 16th. Of course, um, COVID-19, most in-person events have been canceled. So we postponed it to June 6th. But um, after chatting with the hotel and listening to you know CDC and stay-at-home orders being extended, we actually officially announced the cancellation maybe two weeks ago. And it took a lot to even come to that decision. You know, we were still holding out on faith sure. because, you know, there's so much money, you know, in play, but not only that, just like, it's an experience that moms across the nation look forward to. And for some moms, it's the only event that they get to attend all year for themselves. So we held on on hope, but we had to cancel it. And now we have officially decided to pivot to the Monference Digital, which is scheduled for June the 14th. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm sure it was so hard to make that decision. I'm sure a lot of people who had been at the Monference before really wanted it to move forward and have that, but it just oh. the way things are right now. Oh my awesome. goodness. Yeah. But you've been able to, you're still going to be able to offer that in a, just a different format to people. Yeah. yeah. In a different way. And it's so funny because we were contemplating canceling and a lot of our moms were like DMing us and emailing us saying, no, don't cancel. We'll find like a plexiglass outfit. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get purple bedazzled <laughs> gloves. You know, you can have hand sanitizer stations. Like they really, really fought for it as well. So it was blowing to a lot of our moms, not just the internal team, but we have to do what's best because you know, we have a social responsibility 
to our moms and to ourselves. So for sure, for sure. So, okay. So that's kind of set the scene. So let's talk more specifically, because I think a lot of people, you know, maybe not with something at the scale of the mom friends, but a lot of people are pivoting the way their businesses are working. I know Kalugo has working on that in terms of moving online and finding ways to support our community. So we'd love to hear some specific things that have been working for you in this process. And the first one I have here from you is leaning on your team. So how is that working for you? Yes. So we have District Mother Hugh, which is the parent company for the conference. We have an amazing board of directors. We recently transitioned to become a 501c3 and we have this great board. And honestly, we have been bouncing like ideas off of them, best ways to pivot, um, language that we should use in dealing with, you know, our vendors, with our sponsors, with our venues, because when you're pivoting or actually canceling an event, it's not like, okay, we're not having the event anymore. No, there's already contracts in place and there's, you know, money that has been spent and we may need refunds, but the venue, they have another policy in place. So one of the members of our board, she's actually a lawyer, which is great. So she's helped us with language, but also they just help to keep us grounded and keep us calm and help us to really think through what it is that we need to do. And I know that Simone and I, we would not have been able to get through this ourselves. We would not have been able to make the best decisions for both District Motherhood and the Monfords on our own. So definitely lean on your team. We also have an incredible team of 25 moms that make up our mom squad. And this is the official planning committee for the mom friends. So we've been reaching out to them as well. And they, you know, we officially created a pivot team, which is helping us stay in contact with all of our attendees. Like we actually call each and every attendee. How are you? How's everything going? Yeah. Yeah. We see that you processed or you want to process a refund. We just want to confirm the card that you're using. You know, is there a prayer request? So we have like a whole team in place. And like I said before, we wouldn't be able to get through this process without them. That's awesome. Second here, you have break down your list of goals and objectives. Yes. And this is also a note to self, Christy. (laughs) You know, sometimes sometimes you wake up and you just hit the ground running, but you don't really have a plan in place. And then the entire day just kind of falls apart. And then also sometimes you look at your to do list and it's just so long and so daunting. And you're like, how am I going to get through this list? And this is the list. It doesn't even include, you know, your housework, cooking multiple meals for your children, nap times, et cetera. So I find that if I look at the list and say, okay, there are 10 things on this list. I know I'm not getting through this list today. Let's pick one thing that is pressing. That is so, so important. Get through that task. I mean, if you get through that task in a timely fashion, okay, well then let's try to tackle something else. But I do not go into the day looking at my to-do list, attempting to tackle everything because it won't happen. And then you get overwhelmed and frustrated. Mm -hmm. And then I take a nap. (laughs) Don't do (laughs) it. Yeah, that's definitely counterproductive. I like that focusing on the big objective instead of just the like minutia. It's like, you got to go big picture sometimes to keep moving toward that. Exactly. Exactly. And number three, rest. Yes. Yes. And I just touched on that. It's so hard to get rest right now because it just feels like you're always home. So you're always working and you're always with the kids. Like there isn't that time. So how are you figuring that out? You are totally right. I mean, I find that sometimes it's it's difficult to sleep at night because one, that's the only time, like once the kids are asleep, that might be the only time you get a little bit of private privacy time to yourself, or you might be like riddled with anxiety. So you can't sleep. And then during the day, you know, when the kids go to bed or take their nap, you're like, okay, I have two hours. I have a two hour block to tackle whatever needs to be tackled. But at the same time, if you, for me, I know if I feel especially anxious or just overwhelmed, sometimes I need to just step back and I'll force myself to take a nap. And it doesn't need to be a two hour nap. You know, I may not sleep the full duration of phase nap, but just 30 minutes, no phone, no social media, just close my eyes and just like rest. I'll set an alarm and then get back up. And that 30 minutes sometimes makes all the difference. That's really good advice. I should start doing that again. I did that when I was on like my maternity leave with my kids, right? Like remember that when they're babies, but I feel like this is a time where you need that same restorative time. Just like, you know, we're just all in the thick of it right now. 
and that 30 minutes can be so restorative. I love yep. that idea. Sleep, sleep when they sleep when baby sleeps, right? Yeah. And, and it's funny because we were on maternity leave at the same time. I know, I know. <laughs> Our babies are like a month apart, like a month and a day or something. Yeah, like they're that. really close. They're yeah. really close. And super you. All right. So let's talk about some things that aren't working and that you would recommend avoiding as we're all in this. So number one, yeah, panicking doesn't work. Yeah, that is true. It, it, there's just no, no, no need. And of course we've, we've been panicked. We've been panicked since, since March, I want to say when the reports really started to break about COVID and canceling seemed like it could actually happen. We started panicking immediately. And also around this time, sponsors started to pull out, you know, cause planning the conference is just such a huge undertaking and it takes a lot of money to power it. So we had all these incredible sponsors lined up and one by one, they just started pulling out, pulling out. And we are literally like, oh my gosh, how are we going to fund this? How are we going to fund this? And I mean, I am a spiritual person. I'm a religious person. So I definitely lean on my faith for strength. Um, But one thing that we do all know is that like everything is going to work out the way it's supposed to, right? Everything is going to work out exactly as it should. So even though things may be falling apart all around you, you have to like you can control the things that you can control. But other than that, there's just no point in panicking. You know, each day has its own set of worries. Internalizing it is not going to solve it. Freaking out about it is not going to solve it. So just deal with what you can control, address what you can't control, and then take each day by day. Yeah, I think this time is really a lesson in humility for me. Like I felt as though I, you know, this illusion of control that I had before this. COVID has just completely taken away Oh my gosh. and just saying, okay, there isn't much you can do about changing like the macro circumstances right now. And so it just, you're forced to just, you have to let it go more than I, I ever have. Exactly. In terms of thinking you can control things or that your worry is going to cause a better outcome. Exactly. Uh, and yeah. you're right. Like COVID has really like brought forth the realization that we don't control anything like the updates and the circumstances change day by day. So it's like, okay, we'll be able to go back out by May 15th. Oh, no, we can't go back out until June 8th. Like we don't run this. So yeah. as, as soon as you realize this and apply that to your daily process, I think that you'll be okay. You'll be much better off. Yeah, for sure. And the last thing we have here is being stuck in your ways. Being stuck in your ways. Be I remember listening to a podcast and I think I'm not sure who it was that was speaking, but they were like, yeah, stick to your plan A. And, you know, it's important to stick to your plan A, but you might have to be flexible in the way that you execute plan A. You know, so similarly to the mom friends, you know, we were dead set on, oh, we're going to have this conference on May 16th because they said X, Y, and Z. No, okay, we're going to have it a physical conference on June 6th because of X, Y, and Z. And then we came to terms with the fact that, okay, we can't execute the conference the way that we envisioned. However, we can pivot and try to execute it in this way. So we just have to be flexible, period, whether it's scheduling with our children. I mean, I know that you may recall when we first started homeschooling, there was like this colorful schedule all over Instagram <laughs> and all the moms like, yes, yeah, so at 9 a.m. we do this and at 9.15 we do this and 10 o'clock. And it's like this schedule is so unrealistic, but so many moms that I know attempted to implement it and just fell apart. So, I mean, there needs to be flexibility in how we engage our children, how we teach our children, um, what our routines are at home, what our work routines are. Flexibility is key. So being stuck in your ways is counterproductive. <laughs> yeah. You're just going to set you up to set you up to fail. Absolutely. Um, that's really, really good advice to try to take that to heart. Me too. This is all note to self. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is all note to self. It's good. We're all work in progress. We're, you know, yeah, time to, but it's, it's really important things to keep in mind. So thank you so much, Nikki. This is all as like very actionable and super helpful. I think whether or not you're facing a pivot of an, a big event, like the mom friends, or just kind of you're pivoting your expectations and like Absolutely. the way that you're living your day-to-day life. So I think this is super useful. Thank you so much. And we will be back in just a minute. We're going to have you back to answer our five fun questions. Hi, Christy here. I'm popping in to talk about Kalugo. Since COVID hit, we've noticed creative parents in our community using our rain cover to help give them peace of mind on their daily walks. So we are now selling our compact rain cover on its own as a standalone accessory. 
The compact rain cover has been tested to work on the Minu, Yo-Yo, and Nano, as well as our compact stroller. This is non-medical and shouldn't be the only safety precaution you're taking, and please be mindful of overheating. But we do hope it helps you to feel more confident as you navigate this new normal. Head over to our website, www.highcalugo.com, to check it out. And now, back to the show. So I am back now with Nikki, and she is going to answer our five fun questions. Are you ready, Nikki? Now we're ready. All right. Okay. So question one, what's a parenting moment you are proud of? Oh, I am so, so proud of my oldest son. He is 19. He'll be 20 years old in October. He graduated from high school last May. And during his commencement speech, he actually delivered the commencement speech for his class. He acknowledged my husband and I, and it was kind of like, you know, my parents had me when they were really young and they sacrificed their teenage years so that they could provide for me. You know, they didn't pursue a lot of the things they wanted to pursue because they, you know, were focused on raising me. And the fact that he just acknowledged us in front of that audience, it was just the sweetest moment. And I was so, so proud. And also because like when you have teenagers, you guys, you know, you bump heads a lot, but to see that he actually saw what we went through And then to share that with the entire audience, it was an incredible moment. I'll never forget it. That's incredible. Wow. Number two, what is a new fun thing that one of your kids is doing? Okay. So Faye, she is 15 months and she's hilarious. Babies are just so, so, so funny at this age. She'll do things like just spin around in a circle and just entertain herself and then pass out and giggle she'll mimic you so like I work out I do at home workouts and I'll see her like doing downward dog poses and splits and like baby yoga I'm like wow you're really flexible but it's cool that you're like mimicking me Um, it's so funny and one other last thing that she does is she hides from us you already know if your kids are quiet they're up to no good right So (laughs) you're like, Faye, where are you? And then you'll like see her hiding behind a door with whatever she's not supposed to have in her hand. You're like, Faye, really? And it's so hilarious and cute and and funny. (laughs) Love that. What is a favorite family tradition you have? Okay. A favorite family transition. I would say when I was younger, we would always travel to New Jersey every Thanksgiving for like this amazing holiday dinner. And I would see my nieces, my nephews, my cousins, and it would just be this incredible gathering. And we did that for several years until the family dynamic kind of changed. And I miss that. But now that we're older, my cousins and I were like, you know, we have to bring this back because that was really the only time we saw each other. And now we're old enough to travel on our own. So we plan to do that again. If outside ever opens back back. up. Yeah, Yeah. outside ever opens again. (laughs) Yeah. What is your favorite piece of parenting advice? Oh, I always joke and say that I've been a parent for 20 years and I still don't really know too much. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still winging this thing. But what I will say, and I think a lot of moms have been echoing the sentiment, it's to give yourself grace. Like, don't put too much pressure on yourself. We are literally all doing the best that we can with the resources that we have. So my parenting advice is to give yourself grace. Don't be too hard on yourself. And last question, do you have a recommendation for our listeners? Yes, I do. So I, and I, I think I'm probably late to the party here, but I've never been a huge fan of baths, I'm like long, luxurious baths. But around my birthday, I had a great lavender Epsom soak, like it was a custom Epsom uh, salt pack. And I had this great bath by candlelight and was listening to podcasts. And it didn't last too long because face started banging on the door, but that 30 minutes was really great. And since then, I've been incorporating baths three times a week with the lavender Epsom salt and really enjoying myself. And it's just a moment to relax and regroup. So I would suggest that. That's great. Awesome. Well, Nikki, I love these answers. Thank you so much. And before we go, uh, could you let our listeners know where they can find you? 
Yes, yes. So definitely thanks for having me, Christy. It's always a pleasure talking to you. If you would like to connect with me, you can follow me on Instagram at chocolate fashion PR. That is C H O C L number eight F A S H N P R. You can also follow us at District Mother Hued. That's Mother H U E D and at the Mom Friends. Awesome. Nikki, so great to chat with you. Always fun to chat. And if you want to comment on today's post, you can head over to Kalugo's Instagram. That is at HiKalugo, H-I-C-O-L-U-G-O. And if you have a question or a topic you'd like us to cover, please email me. I'm at CPO at HiKalugo.com. That's all we have for today. Thanks again, Nikki. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. Our music was provided by Sound Planet. Our awesome producer is Aaron McGregor. I'm Christy from Kalugo. We'll be back soon to share more about our adventures in parenting. Until then, remember, you got this.